there is nothing wrong with your television set. Do not attempt to adjust the picture. In 1963, this mysterious voice beckoned us to travel to the outer limits for the first time. What we found there were sights and sounds never before experienced on television. While the Outer Limits stories were literate and compelling, it was their special effects and gruesome monsters that kept Americans awake at night. <gasps> that may seem hard to believe today, but remember, 30 years ago, effects like this were on the cutting edge. There were no special effects as they're known now, no computer-controlled technology. We really, really improvised stuff like you wouldn't believe. With a shoestring budget and a scant six days to shoot each episode, the technical crew of The Outer Limits required energy and ingenuity. For example, this menacing monster floating in space is actually a simple puppet floating in water. We were just saying, oh, God, I'm glad that worked most of the time. We once had... Uh, some prehistoric fish that were coming out of the water to take over a South American dictatorship. The poor stuntmen, you'd see in the dailies, these fish jump up out of the water and zip down their middle and say, I can't breathe, I can't breathe. One of the show's most effective creations was this alien from Andromeda. Radiation! No! You'll burn us! We poured oil over a wetsuit with a strange mask. And when we reversed the negative, it glistened and glowed in reverse. The overall effect was completed by adding the sound of radiation energy made with a microphone and a vacuum cleaner. It was such an extensive makeup. Fred Phillips, who did the ears for Dr. Spock on Star Trek, he devised a mask because I was in the same set as myself. Thank you for your kindness. And as Andro, the monster, and we had gloves that turned my hands into those gnarled fingers. And how did the cameraman film the climactic chase scene? He would lie on his back with the camera in his chest and would be pulled through the backlot forest. Uh, I still get mail when that uh, show shows to this day. Achieving the illusion of a man evolving over a million years required the Outer Limits' most elaborate prosthetic makeup job. Are you still not afraid of me? Its creator went on to win the first Academy Award in makeup for Planet of the Apes. However, the most ambitious monster suit ever attempted for TV came to life on September 30th, 1963. This creature was actually a stuntman walking on stilts and wearing a head mask four times the size of his own. Some stations found the alien so potentially disturbing to young minds that they blacked out its face during the broadcast. Too disturbing? We'll let you decide when TNT salutes the Outer Limits. Next on TNT.